Welcome to Credit Matters TV. I'm Simon Redmond in S&P's Commodities Rating Team. We're seeing the oil and gas sector slowly pull itself out of the oil price crunch of 2014-2016. Brent crude has been trading up to $80 a barrel this year, although of course the year-to-date average is closer to today's price of about $72 a barrel. For the record, our current Brent price assumption for ratings is $65 a barrel for the rest of 2018 and then coming down after that. Oil refiners have also seen strong or decent margins and the outlook for them could well be supported too going into IMO 2020. So how do we see the prospects for the sector and is it due for more rating upgrades? To discuss this, I'm joined today by Alex Adograzinov, our lead analyst for EMEA oil and gas companies. Welcome Alex. Hello Simon. So Alex, could you outline our sort of high level assumptions and views uh, for the oil and gas sector? Certainly. Uh, we generally think that um, metrics for the biggest um, integrated companies will continue improving, uh, supported by uh, the cost reduction, which you mentioned, uh, supported by the actions to contain uh, investments and also limitations on shareholder distributions, uh, which uh, were driving it for the last two years. So we expect 2018 to be a relatively strong year, supported also by favorable prices. But going forward, we think it will be more and more differentiated by the financial policy that each company uh, will take. And here we could see quite significant differences as certain companies have already uh, canceled the script, um, have started increasing dividends. Uh, some companies still want to reduce leverage even more before doing that. So this might explain the differences in the um, outlooks that we have on uh, particular um, companies and will be driving the ratings on those in the, in the next couple of years. Right. So we've got quite a few stable outlooks, you know, assuming that companies either at least maintain metrics or, or improve metrics into line with our expectations. But we do have a couple positive outlooks. Maybe you could speak about those companies. Certainly. Uh, so the two positive outlooks out of the big integrated companies we have are Shell and uh, ENI. Um, in both cases, we certainly expect uh, quite material improvement in credit metrics in 2018. Uh, but what would happen going forward, again, is largely in the hands of the, of the management, as certainly the companies will continue working on the cost side. We don't anticipate significant cost inflation, um, and we, we do not expect these companies to come back with massive capex in one go, so it would probably take um, a, bit, a bit more time to uh, build a backlog of the new FIDs. Um, so it's largely how these companies approach shareholder remuneration and uh, this will essentially um, lead to a, you know, the ability of those companies to maintain certain level of credit metrics like for Shell we are particularly talking about a photo debt of 45% as a uh, potential target for a double A minus which we think the company might achieve in 2019 if they again take a conservative approach on, uh, on shareholder remuneration. Very good. So as we said last year when we upgraded Shell, like the big global mining companies, it's actually financial policy and the decisions that management teams make about uh, capital allocation um, that could have as much to do with the, uh, the future rating trajectory as where oil prices go. Well look, very many thanks for that. Uh, we can find uh, the, uh, the research we've been publishing and the recent webcast we did on sbratings.com uh, and also on Capital IQ. So thank you very much for listening.